Hi there and thanks very much for joining me on this course for how to play blues guitar for the beginner. Now in this course we're going to be covering a wide range of techniques all designed to get you playing the blues. Okay so it doesn't really matter about what level you're at you could be a beginner you'll still be able to follow this course or it could be that you've just recently started and you'd like to kind of explore the blues in which case again it will be well suited to you now because these courses are going to become more difficult as they go along it's important that you kind of start at step one really because all of the modules are relatively short it shouldn't take you too long to work through them okay and that will also avoid the problem of perhaps you scratching your head further down the road thinking what's this he's talking about when it's a subject we've already discussed so that's important yeah that you start at this step and if you're absolutely sure that it's something you know then move on to the next module by all means okay so without further ado let's make a start okay now the first step that we're going to look at are chords and how we can adapt them to play the blues. Now we're going to start in the key of E major and in the key of E major we have three major chords. We have an E major, an A major and a B major. Okay. Now, you may be familiar with these chords already. The e, the e is quite straightforward, and the A is quite straightforward. But the B is probably the most difficult chord out of those three. Okay, And we have a number of ways of playing the B. We can place our first finger on the first string of the second fret, and then these three fingers will play the second, third, and fourth strings on the fourth fret, and we just play the bottom four. Okay? So that's one way of playing a B. Another way of playing a B is to use our first finger to play the fifth string on the second fret, and then this third finger plays the second, third, and fourth, just like we were playing in our previous position. Now, some of you are going to find that a real challenge if you haven't done it before. And the only way for that to become easier is simply by practicing it, okay? So this is the B shape that I'll move that middle finger out of the way so you can see. Okay, so that's a B. So you have this way, like I say, which is like an open B. Or we have this way. Okay. Now, what you're going to notice throughout the course is that sometimes I will um, put the chord diagrams up, other times I will just put the chord names up. Sometimes I will zoom in and sometimes I won't zoom in. And there is good reason for this. Okay, so I need you to trust me on this. I can go into the reasons for why that is and essentially in a nutshell, it is so you don't become reliant upon anything visual that I put up there, okay? Because ultimately, I'm trying to get you to a place where you can hear the name of a chord and you will know what it is, okay? So there is a definite reason behind these things. If for some reason I don't zoom in, it's because I've explained it and there is no need for me to do so. So, we've just taken a look at the E, A and the B. Now, whilst we can play blues in these positions, say for example, Obviously, we can play blues using those open positions, okay? But we can also adapt those chords to help us play some standard blues, and that's now what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so rather than this E position, 
we're going to play this E position. Okay, now, that looks like I'm barring all of those strings on the second fret there. And in effect, I'm not. What I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the fourth and the fifth strings on the second fret are pressed down. Anything below that doesn't matter because I'm only going to play the top three strings. So we have an open E string, then the next one is fretted, and the next one is fretted. So this is our new E major blue shape, okay? Now, if you haven't played that before or used that shape, you need to understand that it will take a little bit of practice for you to get that sounding how you would like it to. Okay. So, that is our E position. And we just play the top three strings. Okay. Now, in order for us to play the A position, all we do is we slide this finger down. Okay, so we're now playing the third and the fourth strings on the second fret. That's all. They're the only ones that we're fretting. And we're playing an open A, which is the fifth string, along with those two notes. So we're now effectively playing the fifth, the fourth, and the third. Okay, and we have an A, kind of. Okay, that's all we're looking to do. Just play the bass part of these chords. And then for our B chord, we're just simply going to use our first finger on the fifth string of the second fret. And this third finger is going to play the fourth string on the fourth fret. Okay? And for the B, we're only going to play the fourth and the fifth strings. Okay, so we've really scaled that B down to something that we can manage, okay? So now we have an E an A and a B in our new blues position. Now with those three um, chords, we can begin to play a very simple blues, okay? Simply by just... This kind of idea. Yeah? So it's very simple, but nevertheless it's a blues, okay? And to do that, all we're doing is with this right hand we're just playing So that's all the right hand is doing, yeah, it's very, very simple. And feel free to experiment, but the important thing is the timing, okay? So tap your foot or count or have a metronome, if you possibly can, because it really helps to get that idea into your mind early on, rather than it be something that you come to further down the road. So our timing is really, really important. So. Let's have a go at playing that together, starting on the E, and I will put the chord letters up above so you can see what they are. So just to recap, we have the E shape, the A shape, it just goes down a little bit, and we don't play the E when we play the A chord, we just play the 4th, 5th, third, fourth, and fifth. And for the B, we just play the fourth and the fifth. Okay, so starting on the E, after four. Two, three, four. So try and get that as even as you can to the A. Two E. to B, to A, to B. 
Okay, so it is a very basic blues, admittedly, but nevertheless, it has a feel, blues feel to it. One more go at that together before we move it on to something a little bit more interesting, if you like. Okay, so after four, two, three, four. E. E. A. E. B. A. And E. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too tricky or too difficult for you, okay? All of these things will become considerably easier once you practice them and things like that. Obviously, it goes without saying. There's no magic involved in learning the guitar, as I'm sure you know. It's just kind of a question of how much you can practice. That's what it's about, really, you know. Um, there's no substitute for practice. If you're getting good tuition and you're applying yourself with the practice, then you will get there. So be patient with yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Right, so moving on. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a little bit more of a rhythm. And we're going to use this third finger to help us. Okay? So, as, as we already know, this is our E and this is our A. Okay, so what we're going to start doing now is we're going to add this third finger on and off in a kind of bluesy rhythm. So let me show you what I mean. That kind of idea. And when you go to the A, it's exactly the same. Back to E. And then when we go to the B, we just play to A. Okay, so as you can see, that that's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and all we're doing is we're adding this finger on, off, on, off, on, off. And the way that we count this so we can make sure that we're getting it right is one and two and one and two and one and two. See how that fits in when I count one and two and one and two and one and two. And when I say and two, that is when this third finger goes on the fourth fret. Okay? Right, so let's see if we can try that together and we'll play it nice and slowly. Okay? So again, after four, two, three, four. Two A. So that's a kind of simple little riff. Which you can practice, yeah? And you can practice those changes at different times. I mean, different blues will have the changes at different times. Generally, there is a 12 bar feel to a blues, okay? Which we're gonna talk about at a later stage. But it's just important that you get a good feel of what these chord substitutions we're using are, okay? So that is now an E, that is now an A, and that is a B. Okay, 
So I'm sure you've already got that now. So I would suggest that you spend a little bit of time practicing those two little simple rhythms and getting them in uh, kind of to a point where you're happy with them and they're sounding correctly and you feel that the sense of timing is correct as well. Now once that you have that, you can, you can add more to it. So for example, we could play doing is we've added another note okay so whereas on the last riff we're just going two four essentially two and four on the fifth string and then when it's an A on the fourth string yeah, well with this, we're just adding the fifth fret, all right, of whatever string it is that we're going to play. Now, there are a number of ways you can do it. You can do it like I was just doing it then by using the first finger, and that third finger plays the fourth and the fifth fret. Or we can use our little finger so we don't slide and we play. Like so, yeah? Now, my guess is that you'll find that second way a little bit harder than the first way, yeah? Because this little finger naturally doesn't seem to want to do a whole lot when you're starting out. So for that reason, it's a good idea to incorporate that into your practice. So yeah, it's fine to use the third finger, like so. But it's also a good idea to use this pinky. Like so. Same for the A. Now you can hear that I'm just going, on the right hand I'm literally going. So, yeah. For the E and then for the A. So it's not difficult what I'm doing there, yeah? It's relatively straightforward. So there are three blues rhythms that we've kind of learned and you can now practice because the smoother they become, the better they sound, obviously. And I always suggest that you try and play them slowly to start with. And then you can build the speed up. Now, if you use a metronome, that's a fairly kind of good way to go because you can set the metronome at a kind of slow tempo and then gradually up the tempo. So you kind of get in, you know, you can play it slowly and you can play it a little more quickly too. Okay, so that really does help with the kind of speed of things. Now, I've been playing it slowly, like I say, but you, once you've kind of mastered these basic rhythms, you can then play them much quicker. So you can play. So obviously, you're going to be able to speed things up a little bit once you've um, learned the basic concept. Now, whilst we're on the subject, we've been playing a B. 
-hmm. And the new shape that I showed you was just simply the fifth string on the second fret and the fourth string on the fourth fret. So these two fourth and fifth strings. We've reduced our B to just two notes. Now we can replace that B with a B seventh, okay? And to do that, we just place our first finger on the fourth string of the first fret, and then we place the, our other three fingers on the fifth, third, and first of the second fret. So we have, we don't play the top note, and we just play the bottom five. Okay, so this is a nice chord. And it lends itself very, very nicely to the blues, and we can slide them all at one. And back down. And that creates a blues feel. So, for example, if you were to replace the B which I showed you earlier with that B7 from time to time, you might be pleasantly surprised by the results because it works very nicely. Okay, so. So for example, at the end of a passage, let's run through and I'll use that B seventh as an ending. Okay, so we have. Okay, so there are various ways you can put that B7 in, and for that reason, I think it's very worthwhile showing you that chord. Okay, so that's a chord you'd like, you might like, might like to practice. And just that shape there. Now you may find that those notes that you're playing on the second fret are kind of a little bit of a challenge to start with, but like I say, with everything, it does become a little bit easier the more you do it. Okay, so that concludes our first module.